Given what's going on in the world right now, most of us are spending a lot more time at home, and that seems to mean a lot more TV. I've been watching a little bit more TV myself, and I've noticed that therapy is becoming more popular in movies and TV. But is it realistic? Is it legit? And is it really like therapy? I'm gonna share my honest reactions as I watch a few popular TV shows and movies today. <laughs> Hey y'all, welcome back. My name is Dr. Allison, and in case you are new here, I am a licensed clinical psychologist, and I have pretty much made it my life mission to really simplify psychology. So to break down the science and to help people you understand how you can live a healthier and more meaningful life. Now today's video is a little bit different and a little bit more lighthearted. Therapy is really important to me. As a psychologist, the relationship and the interaction that happens between a client and a therapist in the therapy room is so important. And so I'm gonna share my honest reactions as I watch a few popular TV shows and movies to tell you, is it truth or is it drama? So let's get started. All right, so this is You, which has a like cult Netflix following. I will totally self-disclose, I have never seen the show because I do not watch scary shows, movies, anything like that, because I cannot handle them. So have I seen this creepy show? No. Have you seen this show? <laughs> Probably. So here we go. Is this there? Wait, is that John Stamos? Okay, also, therapist with the glasses pushed down on the nose. I mean, <sighs> stereotype. Is with a sweater vest, of course. Of course, because all therapists wear sweater vests. You sure that's a pretty heavy accusation, right? How do you know? Wait, that guy just has a a thing of sharp instruments next to the couch for clients? Okay, no. Experience. And he also didn't see him shove it in his shirt? Candace. There are certain tells you can just, you can you can see it in their eyes when they look at you been cheated on before my last relationship i was blind i only saw what i wanted to see but i didn't make that mistake again this time i made sure that ronaldo was different so i know this is why i don't watch the show because i'm already creeped out so i knew if he was lying or cheating then someone was using him I'm not, I'm not one of those shrinks that are obsessed with the past, but I think in this case we should take a look. Uh, why don't you tell me about your childhood? So I actually like that line because that's kind of a stereotype about therapy is that we all just want to like explore the past and talk about your parents. So I like that he said like, that's not really my style, but sometimes it is important. A plus on that, John Damos. Look, I mean, but we're not here to talk about my childhood, right? We're, we're talking about my relationship, which ended. Typical client response. Because... A surprise party? No, that's not when it ended. Wait, apparently this therapist's name is Dr. Nikki. For the record, I should stop calling him John Stamos. We're just back together, regardless of your suspicions? Mm, didn't matter. That was the past. All right, so what happened next? Things were good at first, but then it started to feel like something was different. Still doesn't notice the sharp instrument up his sleeve. And that, that's when it ended. That's one hell of a story. What's your diagnosis? My diagnosis? Yeah, yeah, what do you make of it all? Well, you might think I'm crazy because I've only known you 48 minutes, but... I think there's two of you. Two Paul Browns. One has been hurt in the past, feel betrayed and hopeless. With the Wait, what is he drawing? The other one has faith. In spite of the evidence to the contrary, he believes true love exists. And we needed a stick figure drawing for this? And that is someone I think I can help. And he passes it to him like a prescription? Our time is up now, but I, I would... Uh... Sure, be down to seeing you again if you'd like. <laughs> also, for the record, my therapy chair looks almost identical to the one that he's sitting at. It's just a different color, so. Mm. Hashtag basic. <laughs> I don't think so. Smoke 
joking. This is a current show. Wait, what's he doing? Just leans back and smokes a cigarette? <sighs> okay, okay, here's my grade on this one. Again, I'm gonna give it... I'm gonna give it an A minus. I'm real tempted to give it a B plus because there are some things, like I like his style. I think there's some things that real are realistic and very, I don't know, not super stereotypical, but like, hello, you miss the sticking the sharp instrument up your sleeve and you doodled a stick figure drawing and handed it to him and then smoked a cigarette when he left. Like, I don't, yeah, I don't know. That one's a mixed bag. And also still not gonna watch that creepy show because I watched two minutes of it and I already feel creeped out. Wait a minute. My husband, who's filming this, just told me the spoiler alert. I feel like I don't know if I can say it. However, if you've watched this show, then you know whoever that guy's girlfriend is seeing. Okay, unlikely. Okay, that's all I'm going to say, because I'm not going to spoil this show. What? Okay. It, suddenly my rating just went down because I also found out his girlfriend is also a patient of Dr. Dr. Nikki. So this just went from an A minus B plus to like an F minus. That's not even a thing, but I'm giving it an F minus. But some of his interactions were kind of realistic, so I don't know. Oh yeah, okay, I remember this movie. I think I've watched it. Oh yeah, Anna Kendrick, okay. Listen, uh, there are... Isn't she like... A psycho like a trainee? Okay. A couple books I want you to check out. A lot of people find them really helpful. Um, don't have to read them cover to cover. Also, like a therapist just Take writes it on a scratch sheet of paper. <laughs> Not very formal, but very therapist-like. And, and see if anything resonates, okay? Also unlikely she's going to touch him like that. They don't know each other very well. Sorry, are you, you going to, like... Keep touching me like that. <laughs> this? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make you feel more at ease. And That's going to make me feel more at ease. Is that it's like being slapped by a sea otter. Touching from <laughs> trust is one of the key ways that hospital practitioners make their patients feel more secure in stressful situations. Also, not, su I, not a lot of therapists touch their clients like that. Mm. It's, 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 that's not going to Really? Help. Sea otter? Is that, I mean, is this... Is that kind of better? There's no way would she do that. Okay, you don't like that. So also apparently in this movie, in the end, a uh, spoiler alert, they end up dating, which is not realistic. And this is the kind of stuff in Hollywood that drives my psychologist brain crazy because doing that is a gigantic ethical violation. You would lose your freaking license over that. So unlikely that she just tap, tap, tap with this patient and then they fall in love and she gives up her entire career. Unlikely. How's she gonna pay her school loans back? So my rating for 50-50 is an F. Uh, I do like that they show a psychology trainee because um, therapists in training, that is a whole nother, I don't even, that's a whole nother time in our lives that sometimes feels very different. So I do like that they show her struggle as sort of a therapist in training. I do think they show that accurately, but the dating of the, mm -mm, no, F, F, F. So don't think you can date your therapist. However, we didn't see that part in this clip. So I'm gonna give that clip I'm going to give it an A minus because I actually think it's a pretty reflective of a therapist in training or what would happen if a therapist doesn't really know what they're doing or is just unsure or trying something new. So that I do think is accurate, but I don't mean an A that that's what like your therapist is going to be touching you all the time. But I think that's an accurate reflection of what it might be like for a brand new therapist in training. But the whole thing that happens after this clip, dating, mm -mm, no, F. <laughs> Okay, I've never seen this movie, The Departed. I think it's a mob movie. My husband picked this movie. What do you expect coming in here? I have to come here. I know you have to come here, but now that you're here, what do you want? I mean, that's a legit therapist question, right? Asking what do you want from therapy? She's behind a desk. Mm -hmm. not, not true for most the therapists. Truth. Value. Oh. You know, if you lied, you would have an easier time getting what you wanted. What's that say about what you do for a living? I just think we should have a few more meetings before we even talk about prescriptions. Look, look. Just getting a little confrontational. All right. The other night I thought it was a heart attack. I puked in a trash barrel on the way over here. I haven't slept in weeks. Is that true? Yeah, that's true, all right? I said something true. I want 
fucking pills, and you're gonna what? You're gonna you're gonna close my file? I didn't Is that what you're gonna your do? File. I, I know. I, I, I thought I was supposed to tell the truth here. You if are. Only you here. are. Christ, yes. When a guy okay. comes in here against every, every instinct of, of privacy, of self reliance that he has, and what do you do? What do you do, honey? You send him off on the street to score smack? Is that what you do? <laughs> ridiculous. Okay, part of me likes her confrontational style, part of me is a little scared by it. Great. Why don't you just give me a bottle of scotch and a handgun to blow head off? Are we done here with this psychiatry You can put myself through. I'm fucking out of here. And what if that was a legitimate threat? Think about it, fucking hot shot. Also, very unlikely that a psychiatrist is going to yell and point at the door, you can leave. So this is an interaction with a psychiatrist, which isn't quite the same as a therapist. Uh, part of me likes it. She seems very authentic, very real, which is very much my style. You can ask my clients. Uh, however, she's a little more uh, confrontational than I think a lot of people would be. Uh, she doesn't really keep her cool. Again, part of me likes that, be a real human, and part of me is like, mm, is she really going to point to the door and say, get out? Mm, unlikely. Is this what therapy looks like? I'm going to give it a... C minus. It's not quite therapy, a little bit more medication, but also a little more confrontational than normal. Is this the TV show? I love this therapist. Okay, Big Little Lies. This was the HBO, you know, hit of the century. Well, that's not true because Game of Thrones was the hit of the century. However, uh, Big Little Lies, right? An amazing show, even better book. If you have read the book, highly recommend. Uh, I could go on and on about the show and how much I love it. However, before I even watch this clip, I can remember really liking the therapist. And I remember when I watched this show being impressed and grateful and that it was a pretty accurate representation. At least that's what I remember at the time. So let's watch. Okay, so this isn't the scene I thought it was because both Nicole Kidman and Reese Witherspoon's characters go to therapy. So this is when Reese Witherspoon and her husband go to couples therapy and they are seeing the, the same therapist as Nicole Kidman, which does happen, right? Friends can see the same therapist. Family members usually do not see the same, same therapist for ethical reasons. Okay, here we go. There's no other way to say it. I love this show. And I don't think that I'm going to wrap it in a bow and make it better, but... I'm desperate to fix it. Have you considered why you strayed? Okay, very, very therapisty, right? She's sitting in, in her therapy chair with her legs crossed, but she asks a good reflective question. How's your husband to trust it won't happen again? Because it won't. But how can he trust that? Why should he? Thank you. We'll turn to your betrayal in a minute. My betrayal? Adult. Okay, so I like this. So couples therapy I, is a whole challenging thing on its own, but it's often the therapist will respond, right? So she responds and, and he sort of feels like he's taking her side and she very quickly kind of says, oh, we'll deal with you in a minute. Shouldn't say it like that, but that's kind of what she means. Adultery is one form of infidelity. Indifference is another. You describe yourself as a go along, get along, don't make waves kind of guy. That makes you either wonderfully accommodating or profoundly disengaged. So I like to, because this is an example of sometimes therapists do a lot of listening and nodding and empathic reflecting, but also therapists do a fair amount of, you know, what we call psychoeducation, which is just a way of saying we, we, we do try to kind of talk about and help clients understand why, the who, what, when, where, why. And so she's doing that a little bit here, which I don't feel like enough shows and movies um, communicate or, or show accurately. Could it be Madeline was just trying to get your attention? She has always had my attention. Devotion on my end has not been a problem. Why are you unfaithful? Ooh, she does the good therapist where she just sits and looks and pauses, which makes most <laughs> clients uncomfortable, but I like this so far. Also, how can I get the sunlight to hit the back of my head beautifully like that in session? It looks very ethereal, so let's let's make that happen in my office. I don't know if you were to guess. Should I guess? You don't believe in you. How can you trust the relational equation when you have no faith in the some part of you? No, it's not. Okay, she's... 
So this is probably like an example of four ses sessions smashed into one. Um, I think the therapist would leave a little bit more pause for her to explore that on her own, but again, you know, TV. So overall, I think I would rate this, I'm gonna give it an A. I think it's maybe a little bit unrealistic in how, how much she's packing into like one session or even 10 minutes. However, I think her her style and what she talks about in her presentation this is this is a pretty accurate representation um i think of therapy and if you've seen the show you can also see this therapist both with nicole kidman and reese witherspoon so it does give you a good idea that therapists are are different with different clients right or or how far the relationship is so that's a good example of that and also if you haven't watched this show because i've said it 10 times i'm obsessed with it and highly recommend especially what else are you doing right now while you're social distancing Good Will Hunting. Uh, this has been forever since I've seen this movie. This is a cult classic. I'm pretty sure my husband owns this on DVD. If that <laughs> tells you how old we are. Uh, Robin Williams. Let's watch it. What is it? That's your file. Just send it back to the judge for evaluation. Oh. Also, why do why do the, why do movies always make therapist office look like hoarders? Like, no one, ha no one has all this crap taped up on the wall. You're not gonna fail me, are you? No one uses paper files anymore. Actually, that's not true. That's People sick. do, but most don't. Wanna read? Why? And again, making therapists always wearing cardigans, all right? We do not wear cardigans all the time. Got any, uh, experience with that 20 years of counseling yeah i've seen some pretty awful shit i mean have you had any experience with that well he's asking him about personally personally So that does happen, right? Where clients will ask about, have you experienced this personally? And it's a really tough challenge as a therapist, how to answer that. Um, this is probably more info than you want to know, but of course you want to be honest. You never want to lie. And if you can relate to their experience and their pain, you, I think, want to communicate that. But of course, we have to be really careful that our stuff as therapists, because don't forget, we all have our own stuff and our own baggage and our own history, right? We want to be careful that that doesn't become the clients to hold and to manage. So this is a really, it is a question that therapists get, and it's a really tough response. And actually, I like how he's responding because he's He's slow to respond. He's gentle in his response, but he, he communicates, yeah, he's... He's seen some stuff. Is that why, uh, is that why I broke up with Skyler? I didn't know you had. I did. You want to talk about it? No. Okay, so far I do like his style. He's not overly therapist-y, not overly aggressive. He sort of is rolling with what the client is giving him, which is... Um, and, and some of this is just my style as a therapist, so that's probably why, we're, why I'm reacting that way, but digging it. Hey, well, I don't know a lot. You see this? Also, if you're wondering if therapists really cuss in session, uh, the answer is it depends. Uh, some feel very, very free to just speak how they normally speak, especially if you as a client curse, others do not. But if you're thinking that's not realistic, you'd be surprised. I have been known to curse. So this is obviously a really intense scene, but I think one of the things that you're seeing is that sometimes like when we have our breakthroughs in therapy, it's right on the edge of often like a lot of discomfort in the room. I used to have a supervisor in session that would say some of our best breakthroughs are when you catch a client off guard. And I think this is a good example that he's not being aggressive, but he is just gently pushing, pushing. You can see Matt Damon is becoming more uncomfortable, but you can also see something really important is happening. And you can tell by the interaction, this doesn't happen all the time, right? Or else it loses its power. But you can tell this is this is something that Robin Williams as a, as a therapist really feels is important. And so he is gently pushing on it and you can see it's prompting a reaction, but you can also see that reaction is is super important. 
You also might watch this and wonder, right? Do, do therapists and clients hug and touch and have this much physical comfort? And I would say 99% of the time, no. Are there times that as, as therapists, you have really intense interactions, appropriate of course, but intense interactions like this, that kind of step outside of the norm? Yes, but what makes them powerful is that you have them 1% of the time. So I think, would every session be like this? No, I, I'm guessing, I haven't seen this whole movie in a really long time, that this session is like, is, is rare in, in terms of its intensity. Apparently after this part, this is like near the end of the movie and this is a really big breakthrough moment for Matt Damon and I think after this the movie sort of ends and kind of suggests that Matt Damon goes off and things sort of turn out happily ever after. Um, and so I guess I'll just say that these breakthroughs in therapy are really powerful but they're not the end, right? Because having these breakthrough moments is awesome, and yet then there is there's more, right? There's what what do you do with that? How do you how do you take action on those breakthroughs in your life? So they don't necessarily show that part, and that doesn't mean you need to be in therapy for life, right? But often you have a breakthrough like this, and then you sort of come back to try to like unpack all of that or really make sense, and then integrate that in your life so that you take action on this really powerful breakthrough. So overall, though, I. I would give this interaction an A, and I mean, it was leaning towards an A plus. It may not be every therapist's style, and it certainly wouldn't be every session. So if you're just starting therapy, do not expect this. But if you'd been working with a therapist for a long time and you really had a great relationship and a strong rapport, this could be a really accurate representation, though I would appreciate if they made his office look less like a hoarder. And ditch the cardigan. All right, so there you have it, my honest reactions to pop culture's take on therapy. Some of these examples are awesome and some of them are so terrible I could not control <laughs> my reaction. My goal in making this video was to be a little bit lighthearted and entertaining given what's going on in our world. However, it was also to be helpful because if you are thinking about therapy and you are thinking about reaching out but you're a little bit nervous because of what you see out there in the media, I want you to be assured that it's not all accurate and that's not all how it looks. We're not all in wingback chairs smoking a cigarette with scribbly on a pad of paper. Some people are, but most of us aren't doing that. So if you're thinking about reaching out for therapy, give it a try. It's not quite like the movies suggest. Um, if you want more simplified psychology and you want tips and tricks for living a healthier and more meaningful life, then poke around my channel, like this video, subscribe, check out my website, DrAllisonAnswers.com. There's so much goodness there um, for you to explore and look at and really apply to your life. As always, I appreciate the time that we've spent together today, and I hope you will come back for a new video very soon. Bye-bye.